Okay, folks, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this drawing uh, with my hot pastel set. Uh, and before we do that, I'm going to show you just very briefly that I've drawn out this uh, part of the still life with white charcoal pencil. And I would suggest that you do the same thing. Notice that I've constructed it so that if you look at the bowling pin, for example, I didn't just freehand one side and then try to match the other side because that would just take forever. And I'm sure a lot of us have done that in the past. So what I suggest that you do is draw everything by constructing everything, okay? So like this, for example, I did a circle, then I put a center line down the middle, and I make sure that this angle is the same as that angle, and they are equidistant from that center line. This is an ellipse with another overlapping ellipse to draw that first ring second ring, another ellipse, and overlapping another ellipse to draw the second ring. And notice that the ellipses are about the same size because they're so close to each other. But look at the bottom. The bottom ellipse is much fatter uh, because the eye level is further up here. And this object, the bottom of that uh, bowling pin is much lower from or further away from my eye level. So I can see if this was a glassy, transparent uh, bowling pin, I could actually see through it. And, and the bottom of the bowling pin would show me a wider ellipse because it's further away from my eye level, okay? So notice that I've constructed everything. I've left all the construction lines to show you. The center line down the middle. So the ellipse is drawn symmetrically and make sure that the axis, image, symmetry axis of the ellipses are parallel to the top and bottom part uh, uh, width of the page. Um, and then notice that I divide it equally so that this space is the same as that space on either side of the center axis. Uh, and notice also that I made a construction here. It's easier to go ahead and put an angle here. Just draw it bit by bit, part by part. So I dissected the whole uh, bowling pin into segments. So a circle going down at an angle, rings, rings at an angle again, straight down, and then I curved it on the left side, did the same type of curve on the right side, and then angled again, and then did a fatter ellipse at the bottom. So if you do the construction this way, then you can be assured that the left side, that curve, that uh, concave and convex curve will be the same as the right side, okay? Then here, uh, the donut-shaped object, I made sure I kind of lined up to see that it's the same way it's lined up as the still life. So I use my horizontal axis, I use my vertical axis, and I construct it center line again. This is the symmetry axis of the uh, ellipse uh, at the end or at the top of that donut. Uh, so I constructed it uh, as if these objects were transparent. So I'm over, I'm drawing it uh, on top of one another, and then I can erase what I don't need. So the, the sort of the back part of that um, bowling pin, I can just erase it later when I'm drawing. Okay, so this is just construction. I've left it, and uh, it's good for you to construct it and then get your contours down so that you have that ready to go. Draw it with, again, a sharp charcoal pencil, and then we can begin using our pastels, okay? So the first thing that I do is that what I normally do, okay? And so it, it really depends on you, okay? So some students or some artists will do the blocking method. What it means is that they look at the bowling pin and even though there's a little bit of violet here, there's a little bit of green here, you know, and there's a hint of violet in, over here, they, the blocking method would be they find the overall color of the uh, object and it's blue, then they just put down a blue that's closest to like the general color of the object. So, and then after that, they build from sort of dark to light, okay? Uh, for me, I don't work that way, so I'm gonna show you the way that I normally work, which is to separate everything. Pick out the lightest areas, pick out the darkest areas, you know, keep them separate, and then do the transition to create the form, okay? So here I see the highlight, that's the easiest things to spot, so I'm gonna go ahead and and put this down here. But before I do that, I'm going to pull out these three things that I picked up from this uh, set of new pastels. So you have like a very, very cool white you can see, and then it gets progressively warmer, okay? So 
what you can do is um, you can use say this second one here which is also light in value and also a little bit warm because that light source is fairly warm or you can use this which is light in value but then cool okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and use this first and you may wonder why I'm using this because it seems really cool compared to that uh, temperature of that highlight on that bowling pin okay so it is it is pretty cool um, but what I what I'm doing is that I want to make sure that I have the right value okay so this is sort of like my method so I pick up a value that I think is the correct value uh, and the temperature may not be right but I'm putting it down there it might be a little bit too cool you know then no problem I'll take a warmer pastel which is like this yellow and I'll just add a hint of it to my white so that it warms it up a little bit more so that it reads a little bit more like that highlight uh, that you see so if I just put white in here again too cool so just a hint of yellow if you put too much yellow no big deal go add a little bit more white but remember do not put any pressure okay so if you are like if you are really nervous about your pastels Hey, listen, just, just have a good time, okay? Just don't, don't worry too much. Just kind of enjoy, use sort of common sense. So look, I picked up a blue here and it's pretty, uh, it's a light blue. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And just go, notice that I'm not even too bothered about how I lay that down, but, but paying attention to where the edge is, making sure that I put that in there. But just my marks, they are fairly large. And is this the right color? Absolutely not, okay? This color is not the right color. So, but why then did I pick this? Why didn't I just go straight to this color, which may seem like this blue may seem to be like the more accurate of the blue. And I figured that, well, it's lighter in value. This blue seems to be a little bit dark. Remember what I talked about values earlier. Colors have values. So, um, so this is definitely not the right temperature. This may be a little bit better, maybe, uh, but compared to this, but I picked this lighter blue because I feel like it's a lighter value. So what I'm going to do is then pick this blue here and I'm just going to mix the two, okay? To get the color and the value that I want, okay? Now, if you notice that it feels like it's kind of like it's pixelated, like it has um, the paper showing through, no big deal. You just layer it, okay? Layer that uh, and just continue to keep layering. Okay, so I'm just going to add that. So, so far I'm just adding blue to it. So let's just say I decide to, you know, try a little bit. I'm just going to experiment a little bit here. What if I add just a hint of yellow? Why do I want to put a hint of yellow? Because it's the light source is hitting, uh, the light is a bit warm. So I'm just going to put a hint of yellow next to it, okay? This highlight seems really strong here. So what I'll do is I'll take my blue again, and there's two different, it's the, it's the same type of blue, but one seems to be a bit lighter than the other. I'm just going to take the lighter one, I'm just going to hit that highlight a little bit to knock it down some. And if I feel like that highlight is knock down too much like what I'm doing right now okay no big deal don't don't freak out again it's really no big deal just gonna go ahead and add that white again gently okay now remember we are not going to blend with our fingers okay uh, or a tissue paper or, or one of those spongy tools that I said you could get, you know, that works really well for pastels. We're not going to do that. However, we can use the edge of the pastel stick to kind of blend it. So notice what I'm doing. I'm actually blending it. So it's sort of like softer, okay? So that may not be the right color. So let's use something that I think maybe may have a hint of green in there. Let's use this color here. I don't know, I can't really see so well here. Let's put this color in here. So notice that that might be a bit too dark. Okay, so what happens if you pick a color and you think it's the right color and then you realize, oh, that's too dark. What do I do? Again, don't freak out, you know, start mixing. Okay, that bowling pin actually has a little bit of green in there. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of that. Okay. Uh, 
Again, if it gets too dark, I'm just going to go ahead. But notice I'm just putting in the values and the color, but it's very light, light layers. Okay, so I'm just going to continue doing this and and we'll, I'll just work, continue on this and then we'll pause for a little bit and we'll get back after it's a little bit further along. Okay, folks, so I've continued drawing a little bit more and I just wanted to show you again. I started off with that highlight. It was a little bit too cool, so I add a little bit of yellow to sort of warm up that, that highlight. So remember, you are looking for the value. You're also looking for the temperature, okay? So here... Uh, for example, it's really, really dark. So what I did was I picked one of my really dark pastels. So sometimes your pastels get really dirty. At the beginning, it'd be very clean. But after a while, if it gets really dirty, you need to wipe it down so that you can see what color it is. So this one is like one of these sort of dark greens. You probably will be able to find if you have a set of um, 48, you probably be able to find another color that's like even darker like this one, which is like, a hint of like blue green so then what I did was I added that in the dark area I also add like a dark green in there uh, because this bowling pin has some sort of green in it it's not just blue so it has blue with some hints of green so I build up uh, the the color here and the value okay so you have to pay attention to color and value and notice there's going to be some uh, purple in here because it's picking up some of that red orange of that donut shape uh, object so here you can either put a hint of red on top of that blue um, or you could or you can add a hint of violet but what I probably will end up doing is I'm going to build this blue up a little bit more until I'm pretty satisfied with the blue that I have and and the value that I have then I'll put like a hint of red on top of that okay which I'll show you uh, afterwards when we continue later and then here I've added a hint of green because it's picking up some green from the bucket so you can either add a hint of green in here uh, which I did but it has a hint of blue green because what's happening is that that green is mixing in with that uh, blue of that bowling pin and makes making it a little bit more green greener than usual so you can either use that blue green or you could just add a green on top of that and let it mingle with the blue that you have on your bowling pin okay on the, on your on the drawing so um we'll continue some more okay folks so i've done quite a bit of the body of the bowling pin so there are a couple of things i want you to sort of pay attention to uh remember how we drew it with charcoal pencil to get the contour line and when you're working with pastels you want to be careful use that as a guide but sometimes it's sort of like Sometimes we go off the, 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 out, the contour line or the edge, uh, so we'll have to reshape it. So remember that if you want to get the nice clean edge here, you shape this way and you shape from the opposite direction, okay? So that you can get a nice clean edge. And be mindful of your structure. Don't let the pastel uh, sort of distort the structure while you're working with pastels. It's pretty messy. And you can tell if you look at this bottom here, it's all this is like coming from the top because it's not staying uh, on the surface of the paper. So that what happens is that when you're drawing with the pastels, don't press down on it. Remember I said that? Just very light layers. And there are many, many light layers over here. And then tap it to let the residue come down. Okay. Sometimes students like to blow on it. Um, and you can, but just be careful, don't blow a lot. If you need to, if you feel the urge to do that, if your tapping is not normal for you, you need to blow a little bit on it, just blow gently, but make sure you always try and blow your nose after that to get rid of any kind of residue that may have made its way up your nostrils, okay? So uh, you don't want to breathe in that stuff. Some students like to work from top to bottom because you can tell, see how it flows down to the bottom. Uh, you can try doing that if you feel that that's very uncomfortable because you don't want to start, say, at the top, it's drapery, you're nervous about that, you want to do something else first that's maybe at the bottom, uh, that's an easier object, that's fine. But bear in mind that once you work on the top, that pastel is going to fall down on anything that you've drawn. One of the ways to prevent it from doing that is that if you take a piece of paper and you just take your uh, masking tape, and just kind of get most of the adhesive off your clothes and then just tape off a sheet of paper underneath 
whatever you have drawn so you can draw on top of it and if the pastel falls you're you're drawing beneath it uh the objects that you've finished uh with your pastels will be protected okay so here i want to just mention very quickly i started off with the highlight if you've you know we've done that earlier then i've used some light values but not necessarily the right color and then i i mixed in the right color so that i could get the right value and the right color and then in here it's really super dark so i picked one of my dark colors which is like sort of this this one's black but this which is like this dark blue with a hint of green i put it in there uh, this bowling pin also has a hint of green in there so i put a dark green in there as well to get it quite dark um, and sometimes if I don't have that color and I need it to be really dark, I'll pick up like a really dark color, like maybe a dark brown, and then I'll pick like a blue after that to, so I'll get the dark brown in there to get the value. Because say if I don't have a blue that's that dark or I don't have a dark green that's that dark, but my brown is really dark, I could put in a brown in there and then after that I'll add my blue and I add my green on top of it to try and get the color of the uh, core shadow. So you need to sometimes use uh, the value of a darker color, not the actual color, to just get that value down and then use other colors to then approximate the color that you see there so that you have the value and the color together. Remember, you must need, you must try and get the value and color together, all right? Um, so same thing here, I, you can add a bit of green. Uh, I, I picked up one of these greens that was kind of bright and I put on there and it was like really quite bright so I don't have the values, but I sort of have the color, uh, but then what I did was I went in to pick like a darker blue and I added on top of it to try and get that value down and then if need be I went in with a little bit more green again to kind of get the color and the value okay so remember as you're mixing colors you pay attention to the value as well so if you don't have the actual correct um, value uh, it's okay you can use a different darker color but then to get the value down and then after that try and get the correct color on top of that so then you will have the value as well as the color okay so it's like disclaimer here is this the right way and the only way to do pastels i have no idea but this is a way that i work with pastels and it seems to work very well for what i want to achieve so um making sure that i get my values and color together uh correctly together as what i see in the still life so um just bear in mind that uh there are many many ways of making of, of doing a pastel drawing this is one of the ways uh where we layer no blending and that we mix different colors to try to get the value and color correctly okay then um the other thing to think about is um Make sure you step back, okay? Always step back in your drawing. Doesn't matter whether you're doing pastels or charcoal or whatever. After every like 15, 10, 15 minutes, you know, step back. Compare your values, compare your color to the still life in front of you, okay? And then make necessary adjustments. That's really important. Um, and Okay, I just want to add also, like you see here, there's a bit of a purple because I see that because that red is reflected in there and it's mixing with the blue. So it's giving me this almost like, you know, purpley hue. So don't go in and put purple first, all right? So go in and like layer it, get down your blue of that bowling pin. Same thing over here too. I put some blues in there and then I added like a bit of green on the right side because it's picking up some of the green from the bucket. And then I slowly went ahead and put that uh, red or violet on top of that. So I could use red or you could use violet. You could use, you could use either one, okay? But don't just go ahead and put a strong violet here or a strong red in here. Uh, because what might happen is that that might be too saturated and it won't read as a reflected color, okay? It would start to pop or if, because if it's so saturated, uh, if you just put a red on top of that um, and it might just pop and won't read as if it's sitting on that surface. So you have to be careful with that. Same thing here, if you put that green and if that green is too saturated, it might want to come forward. So if it feels like it's too saturated, no big deal. Take another blue and just kind of like go over it 
uh, and kind of move, you know, use the tip or the edge of your pastel and kind of blend it with your pastel. Don't blend with your fingers, don't blend with a cloth, but just go in and do this. So that what it does is that it just makes the color more transition. Uh, it makes it uh, so smoother and it makes it look like a natural reflection uh, on the object itself. Okay, I just want to point out um, uh, the, the colors and the values in this yellow can uh, and just talk a little bit about how we're going to make some colors using complementary colors, okay? So like, if you look at this can, this can is pretty warm, that yellow. So I have in my hand some pastels and I hope you can see these pastels. So here you have this yellow, which is really good for a light value. Okay, but it's really, really too cool. It's kind of lemony yellow. It's like a really cool yellow. So then we have these sort of like darker sort of yellow orange, you know, uh, and that looks like it's a nice warmer color than that lemony yellow, but then it's a nice warmer color, but not necessarily uh, that same color or uh, that value. So what we want to do is mix, use, this yellow, but it's too cool, so warm it up with this, and when you mix it, hopefully you'll get the color and the value. So you have a, you have a few choices. You have some um, warm yellows, yellow oranges that you could use, so you should mix that together and try and get the color and the value correctly. So what if like you picked up this really kind of orangey color and you put in there, and to try and get that nice warm yellow and it's like too orangey, no big, no big deal. Just mix these other colors in with that particular color and eventually you should be able to get the color of the can. All right. So I want to point out a couple of things that uh, say if you look at the shadow uh, area of the can, it looks kind of like brown. Like it's, uh, some areas may look like a cooler brown. Uh, so what do you do? Do you go in and reach out for your brown? That would make sense, you know? Yeah, go in and reach out for your brown. Don't touch the light. Don't touch that gray, okay? But instead of going in and reach out for a cool brown or a slightly warm brown, what I would ask you to do is think about its complementary. Use its complementary in the shadow, okay? So like in here for the bullet thing, I didn't use the complementary. I used this violets and I used like dark green and dark blue with a hint of green in it because I see those colors in there. But in here, I see that it looks kind of like brown, like mud. What makes mud? When you put those complementary colors together, when you mix it in together, it'll make it look kind of like muddy, okay? Like, like mud color, but uh, it neutralizes it. So I would say to you then, what is the complement of uh, yellow is Violet. So there are two kinds of violet. So there's that more the warmer violet that has more reds in it, and the cooler violet which has more blue in it. And if you're not sure, try a little bit, you know, and see whether it requires a blue violet uh, or the more warmer violet to be used in the shadow. So when you put the violet in there, whether you use the warm one or the cool one, when you first put that violet onto that shadow area. Uh, say you put in yellow first and then you put that violet in there, it may just look very violety. Yes, don't panic. Then put another layer of yellow on top of that. Okay? And then just kind of mix it, uh, layer it. Just layer it like yellow, violet, yellow, violet with your pastels and you should be able to get the uh, color of or the temperature of that shadow. Okay, hey folks, so just now I was talking about the can, and so I've just done a very quick sketch of, you know, of the can with these colors that I've used, except for this one, okay? So I'm just going to use it right now to show you. So let's say if you do this, and if you feel like it's too much, like it's too warm, no worries, you know, go in, add like, you know, other colors to sort of knock that down. So I've added this sort of white color, um, off-white, to knock back down this, yet, this sort of orangey color. So now if I look at this compared to the still life, it looks, you know, compared to the actual container, it looks too cool. So no problem. 
I'll go back in with this. Uh, and if it's not warm enough, I'll add this. Okay. And again, if it gets to be too much, if, if say if you add too much, you add this by mistake, you go in and you add this, don't worry about it. You can always correct it by adding something cooler to knock down that warmness. And then if it's too cool, then progressively add a hint of yellow, which this is a cool yellow, and then you add a warm yellow and you should be able to get back to the uh, color of the object, okay? So this is another thing that I want to warn, uh, talk to you about very briefly. Um, notice all the flags now that's falling off that's not uh, sitting on the paper, but make sure you layer it sufficiently. If you don't layer it enough, say like, let's just say this is already done. Say it looks good, this is already done. Uh, you've just put a thin coat of pastels on it and you're like, yeah, I like the color, I like the value, I'm good with that. Uh, or something like this, you say, oh yeah, I'm good with that. Then you go spray fix it. I'm just going to tell you that if you don't layer enough in, on that paper and you go spray fix your drawing, all that is just going to be sort of blown away or that lack of the paper will sort of overpower that and your drawing will be like sort of lost in on that paper itself. You won't be able to see your drawing. So you need to make sure you layer sufficiently, especially if you're using like a really dark paper or black paper. Okay, all right, let's talk about the, um, what you may call it, the, va the value for the shadow. So I'm looking at this right now and it looks kind of brownish. And so I don't want to just pick up brown and add on that. Is it wrong? No, it's not wrong. You can. But what I want to do is use its complement. Why? Because when you add the complement color, so this, the complement of yellow is violet. If you add the complement in it, it will turn it into mud. Okay, so let's just do that right now. So which one? Warm or cool? I mean, warmer, warmer violet or cooler violet? Hey, if you don't know, try a little bit. Okay, so let me just try the warmer violet. You can put a piece of paper in here if you want to. If it, if it works better for you, you can always turn your board so that it's more comfortable if you want to draw it this way. That's up to you, you know. So whatever works, whatever works, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to put that in there to kind of get that edge right there. Actually made a slight mistake there that I've gone a little bit too high up there, no big deal. I'm just going to go in, the hint of yellow again. So I made a mistake there, I actually drew on the lid, you know, so no big deal. See, but remember what I said, it's, it's really very forgiving, you can kind of layer it. I've gotten rid of that violet in there. I'm just going to go in here, and put that in there. And I'm looking at that temperature of that shadow and I'm looking at that object and I think uh, I'm not sure that the red violet is the correct violet so I'm actually going to switch to use the cool violet because I think the cool violet is more correct. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. So notice what happens when I do that and it looks kind of brown and it might look too dark you know um, in here. No big deal. Let's just continue. That's really dark right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that. And you know what? Right now it looks terrible. Absolutely, I think it looks terrible. Okay? But we're not going to leave it like that. Sure, it looks bad right now. Um, but again, we're not leaving it like that. Okay? I'm just going to go ahead. So I'm going to pick up one of these. I'm actually going to pick up one of these sort of yellow orange that's darker than these. Okay, I'm just going to add to that. All right, and it seems really, really warm. Uh, don't worry too much about it. I'm going to add this to kind of make it a little bit less. If you say you made a mistake. No big deal. So now I've added a cool yellow to cool down that very, very orange that I put in there. But now notice I've also managed to darken it and with that um, violet, and it's a cool violet, I've gone in to add 
a shadow. And so that's what I'm going to do. Now, at this point, if you want to, you can continue with this and just build. Okay, again, it looks, it doesn't look like anything right now, but not a, not a big deal. You just continue building it. Okay, make sure you knock to get rid of the excess so you know what's actually on your drawing. And you just keep building that. And I'm actually using the tip of my <clears throat> pastels to blend it. Okay. Going in a little bit. Okay, making this a little bit darker in here as well. A little bit warmer than that cool yellow that I've been using. Uh, putting more violet. And it's a matter of you building that. And if you feel like, you know what, maybe it's not dark enough.